Yo, Futures, so I'm fascinated by human communication partly because it's foundational to everything we possibly do in society and how we communicate and do things and interact with each other, and yet it's the most primitive thing we have. So right now, the pinnacle of human communication is basically flapping up our meat mouths to push air out of our mouths um, and in face-to-face -face interactions. That's it. <laughs> But even in a face-to-face -face conversation, there's so much packet loss, there's so much data loss, it's, it's basically impossible to convey absolute meaning, the, the exact meaning of what you're trying to get across. I mean, it's so inefficient that we even have to use body language and all these hand gestures and weird like movements to try and get the point across. Um, and apparently they make up the majority of conversations, something like 80% is body language. Our conversations have definitely uh, evolved a bit beyond grunts and pointing, but they're still quite freaking primitive. I mean, we can convey some abstract concepts, but is the full meaning getting across? If you think about it, the reason we want to communicate is really that the memes want to evolve. I mean, beyond some base kind of communication like look danger, you know, language doesn't really play much of a part in genetic evolution anymore. The vast majority of conversations you have day to day aren't really about your survival or your kind of uh, like accessing food or just keeping alive. They're more about something higher. They're abstract levels, they're memes evolving. Just like genes want to spread and uh, replicate and have sex and evolve, G uh, memes want to do the same thing. That's why they want to get out of your head, out of that electrical activity, out of that connectome, and then spread throughout the population. And you can make a fairly compelling argument that the memes are really in charge of and driving our technological uh, evolution. Uh, the internet is really about memes spreading. I mean, that's all it is. So the memes have face-to-face -face communication, but that's, so, that's fairly okay, but it means you've got to be present in that moment, and so you lose a lot of those three factors, like selection, variation, and heredity. I think you lose a lot of variation because what you're doing is kind of like a funnel. You've got all this electrical activity in your mind, a very abstract concept, and then you're trying to push it down the funnel of some linguistic framework, like, say, the English language. And then, of course, because most conversations aren't recorded, you lose the heredity factor massively because, you know, <laughs> you only got that tiny little bit that you actually remember, which then changes over time because your memory is terrible. So then we have writing, which obviously, like, solved the heredity factor. Now these, these languages, this language can kind of, like, continue on and evolve, but you're still losing a lot of meaning because the meaning is conveyed in words only. Writing becomes a telegraph, becomes a telephone, becomes like text messaging, becomes online blogs, becomes online chat, and so what it's really doing is just uh, allowing these memes to evolve much faster and compute much faster. Obviously we, now we have like Skype online video chat and like YouTube and things like that, but still those, as much as those are more uh, a visual kind of uh, higher density information flow, it's still a 2D surface, so you're kind of like losing a little bit of that uh, communication medium. Um, and then on top of that, you have to be obviously like present for a live chat, and then you have to pay attention quite a long time for a video. And even with like recorded YouTube videos, like I'm, I'm planning to switch to YouTube eventually for this, but it's, I've been trying to work out a way to convey meaning really quickly in a really accurate way without losing any of the meaning. Because even if I put out a short two minute video and I make it super compelling and I make it really interesting to watch and I make it you know perfectly edited and spend a lot of time making it, there's still a lot of meaning lost depending on who's watching. I think the ultimate thing for that would be for me to have a conversation with an AI and basically talk to it and, and have it ask questions, I answer it, and talk to it about a certain idea, just ramble for a good couple of minutes and have a chat with this AI. So even this, this video today, like a lot of these thoughts I'm just kind of thinking of on the fly, like imagine if it just recorded me and I just had a chat with it, and while I was having a chat it was just asking me questions and again, continually recording that whole thing. The AI could then take that 10 minute conversation we have and edit it into a nice little kind of uh, mimetic nugget, like a little 3 minute video that's well edited, really put together, and basically can be uploaded to YouTube straight. But an even better idea would be for the AI to basically rebuild and re-edit for every single viewer, depending on their background, their interests, what their level is, what they understand. So imagine YouTube became kind of like a really advanced AI. So as you're watching this video right now on YouTube, every single person that watches this before you and after you sees a completely different video. This one's being customized and edited just for you. It's advanced enough to understand the meaning of what I'm trying to convey in, this, in these ideas, but then it's also advanced enough to know what level of understanding you're at, and actually and it meets the two halfway. So a good analogy might be like, um, so you know how there's autocorrect for spelling, perhaps this could be autocorrect for meaning, uh, from person to person, for subjectivity, for getting that full meaning across. I think as it exists today, like, uh, you know, getting an idea across via video is kind of like a, a pretty good way if they're short and succinct, but uh, for back and forth communication, we're obviously still using like email and chat and stuff like that. And for chat and emails and stuff like that, I still think the best thing we should be doing right now is really moving everyone onto a blockchain-based platform, particularly for any type of transaction or any type of scheduling, so everything is uniform. 
So here's a recent example that's just like, why the fuck is things like that? So um, I'm moving out of my place. I had to um, write a handwritten letter giving three weeks notice for leaving. So I've already done all the legwork for them. I've found someone to take over my place. Um, I'm not under lease, I'm not breaking it at all. Um, and yet I still have to give three weeks notice. So I had to do a handwritten letter, take a photo and email it. Then the lady replies saying, oh, sorry, the photo's too big to print. I'm like, well, just fucking like convert it to PDF. So I converted it to PDF. I sent her back the PDF. Then she sent another manual form, just a, a giant PDF that I had to like, um, I saw it in the dock up, but some people still do that thing where they print it out, write it, handwrite it, scan it, send it back. <laughs> then I imagine from her end, she probably like <laughs> got that PDF, printed it out, filed it, and then manually entered in the data into some database. It's like, why the fuck is people doing this? Now imagine instead of like every single real estate agency in the world having their own system, their own forms, their own process, instead if they plug into a single global real estate DAO, suddenly every property listing and every room availability and every uh, rental availability is all on one uniform system with all the same data that anyone can use and all the leases and all the agreements on the same system. This lady's job would quite literally not exist because there'd be absolutely no need for it and that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> and then the, the, the whole email back and forth would never have needed to happen. And you could apply this same type of like uh, uniform structured conversation format. I mean, that's kind of what the blockchain is doing. It's kind of like putting everyone into a structured format so everything's efficient. I mean, just in the last few days, I've, I've had to go through massive like long email message threads for uh, organizing times to meet up with people and organizing to sell certain things. It's just like a chaos. I mean, a lease agreement is really no different to an appointment with a friend or a meet up with a friend like in your calendar or if you're selling some item, like it's basically a, co a contract between two people, social or legal. If those entire processes were basically stored on a uniform blockchain, that database could be completely open. Like imagine if everyone's calendar was basically stored on a blockchain, and then you just have chatbots mediate the two. That uh, kind of video auto auto correct meaning auto meaning correct thing idea. I think that'd be awesome for text as well. Imagine if every single piece of text you saw on the web was rewritten just for you to get the same meaning across. Okay, then what's after all this? So obviously like people are doing VR, AR, so you know you can be a virtual character in a virtual environment, and that's kind of like a new form of communication or augmented reality where you kind of like teleport holograms. And the AR holoportation thing is pretty cool because at one point all of our technology is going to basically like uh, converge into a single pair of glasses. We won't own anything else. We won't need to own anything else. And hopefully at some point the pixel density and the kind of realism will get so perfect that there'll be someone sitting down and you won't know whether they're really there or whether they're a hologram because it'll just be so perfect. But ultimately, all of this is still based on language. It's still based on these words, which is a very limiting structure. I mean, ultimately, we just want to have direct brain-to-brain -brain communication. Like, wouldn't it be awesome if I could just almost instantaneously convey the meaning I'm trying to get across to you in pure electrical activity so that our brains kind of just sync up for a moment and we truly understand each other? And if you can do that live, you can do that recorded. So if I just like think of a, a concept, think of an abstract thing, it could basically be recorded and then spread. So if anyone wants to understand the meaning, they just download it into the Imagine if every one of these little future videos was a little packet of electrical activity of like the exact conveyance, the exact meaning of like pulled directly out of my brain, you can download it straight into yours. And I think once we get to that point, I, I feel like the English language and any type of language is going to become completely obsolete because it, the English language is really limited. It's trying to apply these words to these, these electrical activities. If you have direct brain-to-brain -brain communication, essentially telepathy, you're not going to sit there and go, you know, the cat sat on the mat. No, you're just going to think of a thought and have it transferred directly into the other person's brain so they fully comprehend it. So I think that's all I got. Um, hopefully some of that meaning sunk in. Um, basically, we're going to go from what we're doing right now to this direct brain-to-brain -brain communication. So if you know of any steps in between that I may have missed, let me know. Oh my god, I found bees.